Everton played host to Merseyside neighbours Liverpool in a classic FA Cup fifth round replay in February 1991. The initial tie at Anfield had finished goalless three days earlier. A lack of goals would not be an issue at Goodison Park, though. Commentary from this passionate derby comes from Barry Davis. For Everton, Andy Hinchcliffe returns after injury, and that means that John Eberl can move into midfield. The surprises are the recall of Mike Newell, and more particularly, the dropping to substitute of Stuart McCall. Peter Beardsley starts a match for Liverpool for the first time since December the 15th. Barry Venison, the substitute on Sunday for Steve McMahon, keeps his place. And the man who stands down is David Speedy, the new boy. Not quite the birthday present he'd hoped for. He's 31 today. It's not been the easiest few days for the referee, Neil Mitchley. But he gave a genuine decision as he and the linesman saw it at one glance. And, you know, players have been known to miss open goals. Ablett giving an early feel of the ball to Liverpool. Their goalkeeper, Bruce Grobbler. And Liverpool attacking the goal to the right. It's Peter Beardsley loses the first challenge to Kevin Ratcliffe. Barry Venison wearing 11, but playing in his usual position, a right back. And Martin Keogh continuing where he left off in the position on Sunday. Ebra with the throw to Hinchcliffe, to Newell. Venison. A couple of uh, early interesting variations on formations. Uh, David Burrows is playing in the midfield, give uh, Liverpool that competitive edge, missing, of course, with Ronnie Whelan and uh, Steve McMahon injured. And uh, Steve Staunton will play an orthodox left-back role. Uh, from Everton's point of view, uh, Pat Nevin will float around, I think, more behind the front two now that Newell is playing alongside Sharp. On by Ebrell. And it comes to him. I think he was a little surprised to find himself in so much space. Didn't really get hold of it. Didn't get a touch from Pat Nevin, who was lunging in. Barnes. Everyone just got a nick of that. But here's Beardsley. Well struck from Scott Rush. Brilliant save on the second occasion by Neville Sartor. Really did enormously well then. This is Atterveld. And Hussein doing the right thing. But it only goes as far as Nevin. And it's cleared by Ablett. Barnes taking on Martin Keown. But he's held up by a combination of Keown and McDonald's. Beardsley. Atterveld. Sharp. Too strong. Gives it to Beardsley again. Rush. Staunton's cross. Nickel. It's a goal kick. And a moment to breathe. Surely significant that Peter Beers said the first time he got the ball, he was prepared to have a crack at goal. That's what his manager has criticised him for. Although he was scoring well early on. That was a good stop. He couldn't hold on to it, but the recovery here was magnificent to get the block in. Atterveld. Ablitz. Not cleanly away. Sharp. Newell, good save, wasn't a shot of great power, but it came a bit through the crowd. It was the side footer from Newell. Nevin. Hinchcliffe. Sharp at the back. The nearest yet. Coming in the 13th minute. 
Trouble I wouldn't have made it, I don't think, if it had been inside. enough strike but it never convinced me it was going to beat Grobola Nickel Mulby Hussein Barnes side netting low Cross that reached Barnes on the wrong side of the post from his viewpoint. A bit frustrated there, John Barnes, because he did the hard work. I mean, he brought it under control, magnificent. And, and then with it sitting up on his left foot, I thought he must at least get it on the goal, but uh, put it into the side net, and he'll be disappointed. Great kick against Ablett. Who takes the ball? That's Martin Keown. He's at the back of the line. Five is Watson, nine is Sharp. Referee wants the kick from farther, further back. He'll settle for that. And Atterveld looking as though he's going to take it. by Burrows, Hinchcliffe, Watson, Newell, the challenge by Staunton, plays it early to Rush, and he lost it, the evidence skipper, Rush in on South Hall, and off the line, brilliantly by Hinchcliffe, Beardsley, and it's deflected off the goalkeeper and into the other corner. Well, I'm afraid that has to go down as an error by Kevin Ratcliffe in the first place, which allowed Rush to run in, and in spite of the brilliant clearance off the line by Hinchcliffe, Beardsley, following up, does what his manager says he should be doing, putting the ball in the net. Brilliant rescue by Hinchcliffe, a little nod sideways and first-time effort that the goalkeeper got to and deflected past the man on the line. So a lead to Liverpool with 32 minutes gone. Well, Neville Southall and there's Kenny Dalglish. Very pleased, I'm sure, with his team's display. There's no question they deserve now to be ahead. Uh, the last 20 minutes they've been Liverpool at their best. And they go off with a half-time lead, given them in the 32nd minute by Peter Beardsley, his 12th goal of the season after the error by the Everton captain, Kevin Ratcliffe. Stuart McCall on as a substitute for Everton at the start of the second half. And I imagine there would have been a few conversations during the halftime interval about luck. One or two remembering 1977 in the semi final when Everton had what they still believe was a good goal by Brian Hamilton. Wiped off by the referee that evening, Clive Thomas. And in the replay, Liverpool won comfortably by three to nothing. And also more recently, the thought that Hinchcliffe would probably have saved Beardsley's shot had it not been deflected by the goalkeeper and uh, Kevin Ratcliffe. Well, oh, Gleish just having a good look around there, see if anything has happened. The main thing just in the early minute or so is Stuart McCall, who's come on into midfield. Seems to be lingering very close to Jan Mulvey, and uh, I'm sure his main job will to make sure he doesn't get the space that was so influential in that first half. This is Hinchcliffe. The saying didn't buy the dummy that uh, Sharp was trying to sell. Ratcliffe takes the quick free kick. Space on the right, McDonnell wants it. Uh, they got a shot in, but... I think perhaps he ought to have made more use of that space than he did. 
Good to see Neil McDonald though in that type of position because uh, Ray Adreveld wasn't able to get in uh, attacking situations. And he and Hinchcliffe have to push forward more and get in crosses so as Newell and Sharp can get the service that can take advantage of, of their height. Well up by Sharp. This is Nevin. Newell at the back post. McDonald. Newell beaten to it by Barry Venison. Hinchcliffe. Sharp! Yes! Trouble our head hands on it, but couldn't stop it going home. Cross from the right, cross from the left, and inside two minutes of the second half, it's all square. Really good long cross. Sharp got up well. Grobola had it for a second, but couldn't hold it out. Such was the force. Nevin. Newell is just inside Ablett. Far side is Sharp. At the back of the area is McCall, but Nickel saw that. It's run loose. Nevin. And it's over the top. He can't quite believe that. Just a moment then when it looked as though Newell could have been offside. But then got in each other's way, Ablett and Nickel. Beautifully kept in by Andy Hinchcliffe. Player that uh, Howard Kendall sold when he was at Manchester City. Preferring Neil Poynton. And then when he came back to Goodison, and he got the man he got rid of. Hinchcliffe is very good in attacking situation. I think he's more ideal to when they play a sweeper system and get him forward rather than when uh, perhaps they play a flat back four. McDonald's got a little flick on and wide by Newell. Extraordinary how the game has swung. Bit of pulling by Barnes. Free kick has been given. And Ratcliffe, his whole demeanour now is very different. I'm sure much happier with life. We've had an hour of the contest. We've had two goals, one apiece. West Ham still don't know who will be coming to Upton Park. That's a corner. The appeal by Nicol then lasted for such a short time, it was almost apologetic. I think he felt he had to appeal, <laughs> must have known it went off him. Only Everton's second corner of the contest. Picked on well, Grobola. McCall, good pace, good cross. He's unlucky not to find an Everton head, but uh, it was all academic because the whistle's gone. A free kick has been given for the initial challenge on Bruce Grobola. Such is the noise and the pace no one heard, but uh, there it is, flicked on by Newell. Then it's hanging up there and... Uh, didn't quite get hold of the ball, Bruce Grobler. Gary Ablett trying to knock it clear, but it, it was in fact Bruce Grobler's hand, and as Stuart McCall put it back across, so uh, the offside flag went up. Barrows having to go back a long way, and look how Liverpool are being harried. But they still keep their cool. This is Beardsley. It's still Beardsley! Well, surely his manager must concede the point now. He has to be a first team player in the starting lineup. Scored both, made this out of nothing. There was Barnes on for him, and he hit an absolute beauty which curled away from the clutching hand of Neville Southall. Absolute scream. It just turns it away from Martin Keown, hits it with his left foot, and from the minute he left his boot. Level South had no chance, and suddenly from hanging on for 20 minutes at one apiece, 
Peter Veers has conjured up a really special goal. You won't see beaten this better this season. And a magnificent strike, his second goal of the game. And, well, I wonder what Mr. Del Glaze will say after the game. At least well done. Now, the Liverpool fans have been quiet for quite a long time. And all the harrying then by Everton. But suddenly it came to Beardsley. And the moment of brilliant individualism and Liverpool lead again. I think you could say David Speedy and Ray Hout might well sit down now on the bench and might not be brought into the action. But uh, it really was their first attack. Eddie Dalglish, uh, he did jump up, I'm sure he when the goal went in. He looked pretty uh, relaxed there and uh, not surprised to be seeing his side now go 2-1 up. Well, it's a pastime in the sport, picking teams, whether they be for clubs or for England, and he can't have done his England uh, hopes any harm. Peter Beardsley on this show. And that's a mess by Nicole! And Sharp scores his second two. An absolute nonsense between Nicole and Grobola. And a minor pitch invasion which is totally about celebration on by Newell Nicol Grobola is there to collect but Nicol thought that Grobola was at home and had he stayed there the back pass would have been simple and it's all square once more Mulvey John Barnes hasn't seen much of the ball in the second half. Takes on Watson and wrong foots him. And Sample had to stretch to put that out of trouble's way. Rush in front of the goalkeeper. Play back again to Mulvey. On by Rush, he's done it again. His 24th goal against Everton. This is now match number 28. Back to Mulvey. Up for Rush, who got there first, and the ball between Hitchcliffe and Southall, who showed quite clearly what he thought about it. Not again, surely, but it is. And Pat Nevin is to be replaced. And it's Tony Cotty who comes on. Southall was removing to the last minute. Ablett wins it, down to McDonald's. Not sure that Tony Cotty's had a touch yet. He might get one now! Cotty for Everton, Beardsley, Beardsley and Rush for Liverpool. Liverpool ahead three times, Everton coming back three times. The last time in the 89th minute through Tony Cotty. Extra time to be played. Ablett. Liverpool certainly calling the tune again. This time there will be a free kick. For the obstruction, indirect, which is academic from out there. 
Three waiting, one of them is the same. And it's in from John Barnes. Turner right over the top. And once more, Liverpool lead. Dipped, curled and came inside the post. Clipped off it to go home. It really was a wonderful goal. Look at the curl on that. The answer is because Everton have battled every inch of the way. Ha! Oh dear, oh dear. That must be very difficult to take if you're an Evertonian. Eight minutes left. McCall, Ratcliffe, on by Sharp, offside flag is up against Cotty. Everton concentrating on hitting the longer balls in there, trying to find Newell and Sharp and get the knocks downs, whereas Liverpool continuing their control possession style, probing and eventually finding that killer pass that is getting through and splitting the Everton defence. Newell. Hinchcliffe. Cotty! Unbelievable! Liverpool have given it away again, and Cotty becomes the third man on the night to score twice. With six minutes left, Mulvey's back pass. Hussein let it go, it seemed to me. And Cotty ran on. And Grovella was left with nothing to do to save the day. Grovella comes for it and loses it and gets it back at the second time of asking. Just thought he'd shake us up there as he comes to that cross in case we were beginning to think that was it. Tony Cotty trying to pounce, trying to get his hat trick, trying to get back to Upton Park and West Ham. Mr. Midgley gets a sign from both his linesmen. <laughs> Standing ovation. These teams. Drawn to play each other for the 15th time in the Cup, the 19th match in all, and a match which will be remembered as long as the FA Cup is played. Really quite fantastic. A stunning evening's entertainment, which had absolutely everything. Brilliant goals from Barnes and from Beardsley. As I said, everything except the result. <laughs>